Welcome to 2024. I wanted to take a minute to welcome you to the channel, the podcast, and to the new look of our media. This year, we have some amazing interviews to share with you on the video and audio NinjaCast, as well as technology how-tos around VMware version 8, Veeam 12, Cloudian version 8, and Rocky Linux. We appreciate you taking the time to look around and do subscribe to our channels so you don't miss a single piece of our amazing content. Welcome to 2024 and welcome to the new look of the Vanamall. I wanted to take some time and walk you through migrating from a virtual switch into a distributed switch. I've looked at a bunch of different videos that are out there and there's nothing that's really concise that I found that kind of walked you through the process that allowed you to one, easily understand it, and two, get past all the deep technical stuff that's involved, and three, not lose connectivity to your V switches when you move to those distributed switches. So in my lab, I'm running vSphere 8.02. Okay, you can see that I in here I have three ESX hosts. They happen to be NUX. Okay, I've already created my data center inside of Venimal.lab, and here's my three ESXIs. If we take a look at the top one, you can see inside this virtual switch, I've got three physical adapters that are plugged into this, and I've got four kernel ports. One is FT log for fault tolerant logging, one is for management. One is the VM network and one I've set up for vMotion. Now we're gonna create similar of these in the distributed switch, but as we build our distributed switch, we wanna do it part at a time or section at a time. So as we begin to make this show up inside of each one of these ESX high host, we don't lose any of that connectivity in the process. And you see, I've got the general stuff running in here. I've got some Rocky Linux. I've got a vCenter. I've got Veeam and Synology and an Active Directory controller. So just a, a basic lab. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go to our networking. Click here and we will go to the Venable Lab. And we're going to right mouse click and then we're going to distributed switch and we're going to do new distributed switch. And here I'm just, you could leave it as distributed switch. I'm just going to do DS1. Okay. And it's going into the Vanimal lab and we'll do next. And I'm running 802 on ESX as well as the vCenter. So I'm going to leave this for eight. Then I'm going to click next. And from here, Offload capabilities, I'm gonna leave it none. Uh, we're not gonna create any default port groups. We're gonna create those manually. And the number of uplinks, I'm gonna change this to three because each one of my NUCs has got three actual connections on it. So we'll put that there. Network IO control will leave for enabled. And now we'll do next. Kind of a summary page as to what we have. Here's the name of our switch. It's version eight. Uh, offloads none, uh, the IO control is enabled and the number of uplinks that we have. Then it kind of tells you, hey, here's some actions and items you could do moving forward. So we're gonna click finish and there's our distributed switch, DS1, right there. Well, one of the things that I want you to see <clears throat> is that now that we've got this distributed switch built, it does not automatically carry over to everything that's there just because we had those three ESXi hosts inside of the data center, okay? If we take a look, and let's go look at the first one here, NUCO1, you can see there's storage, my Active Director controller and all this here, but if we go to vSwitch, okay, You'll notice that it's showing vSwitch zero and that's all that's there. If we go to networking, there is no distributed switch there at all, just vSwitch zero. And of course you can see those three physical network connections and here are 
the other ports that we put in place. These are V kernels that I made on these. Okay. But that's to show you that once we add this, it doesn't automatically add it anywhere else. Okay, so now our next step is going to be to go in and physically add them to that moving forward. So now we're going to go in and create our port groups. Okay, and new distributed port group. And this one we're going to call management. And we're going to give it a next and number of ports. I do not have it set on a VLAN and we'll do next. And there we are. That's for this one. We'll do a next one. Distributed port group. And this one is going to be a fault tolerant log. And we'll do next. Leave it here. No VLANs there. Next and finish. Then we're going to put our third one up here, which is going to be V Motion. And we'll add this one in. And we'll do next. Next again and finish it. And then the last one that we're going to put in here is going to be our VM network. And tell it next, next, and finish. And there are our port groups. So in our environment, We've got our uplinks. We've got the four kernel ports that I created. And in your environment, you may need less, you may need more. This is what I'm using in my environment. You also may need to configure some of these differently than how I've done them. So we're going to the distributed switch itself and we're gonna right mouse click and we're gonna add and manage to host. And we wanna add our host. And we're gonna select them all, okay? Then we're going to do next from here. And we want to take one of these adapters, and we know there's three in each one, but we only want to use one because we don't want to lose connectivity. So that's going to be assigned to uplink three. Okay. And then we're going to do next. Okay. And it's going to ask for VMK 0, 1, and 2 for which one of the port groups these are going to be assigned to. Okay. So VMK0 is management. VMK1, VMK0 is management. VMK1 is vMotion and vmk2 was fault tolerant logging And we're going to do next. Physical adapters is three. Sonic kernels is nine. We're going to do finish. It says it's completed. Now let's take a look over here. And we'll go to networking. And there's our distributed switch. It's been added here. If we go here, we can see that we have brought over our VMK1 management port vMotion. And it's showing one physical adapter, which is all we gave it in the beginning to start with. So now if we go back into 
our vCenter. I'm just going to, you know, we'll scroll up here to knock one. You can see that now it's showing a distributed switch. Also showing that there's the one NIC that we assigned is what assigned to the distributed switch. Okay. If we go down into network, and it will fold this out, and we can look at the V kernel adapters, you see here's the ones that are in the environment, what they're assigned to, okay, and their IP structure that's around them, okay? We can also flip back over here to NUC01 and look in its network, and we see that it is now, again, we have distributed switch one, and we see that that one adapter and the only one adapter is now plugged in here, okay? And if we go back, we can look at the virtual switch, which we see is still connected, okay? Everything is passing through, but we've got everything moved other than what's in here because we're in the process of migrating this over, okay? So that's where we are now. So let's move the other adapters and then move the machines over. Okay, so we can see one of the things that I did while you were away is if we go back over here to our environment, let's look at our and switches that are here. These uplinks, I've now added both of these next. So this is the only one that is still on the um, local switch but the distributed switch has the other two NICs on it in this environment. We've got the kernel ports moved, okay? So now let's go over here and see if we can't move some actual VMs over. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna actually migrate our virtual machines. So we're gonna right mouse click on our distributed switch and do add and manage host. And then we're gonna do manage host networking and we're going to tell it next. And then we're going to select them all because we want to move everything. And we're going to do next. We've already got these two uplinks moved. And we don't want to do the third one yet so we don't lose connectivity. And we're going to tell it next. Okay. We don't need to assign anything because we've got our ports already moved and assigned. So we're going to do next. And from here we're going to migrate our virtual machines. Okay but we're gonna configure per virtual machine. And we're gonna assign a port group here, which is going to be VM networking, and we're gonna assign it. And then we're gonna to go to our next one. And we're gonna assign it. And we're gonna to go to our next one, and we're gonna assign it. And our next one, and we're gonna assign it. Same thing for vCenter, we're going to assign it. We're just kind of rolling down the line here. Assign it. And our token and assign it. We're going to do next. Seven virtual machines, we're going to do finish. And then we'll go here. Let's take a look at our distributed switch. Okay, and here are our machines that are coming over now. So now if we look around all of our machines, we can still get to them all. They're all up and running, but if we take a look here, they're now on our distributed switch. And if we go into network, and then go to DS1 and then look at VMs. We see that here are all of our VMs and they're all in place and they're all running. So we've got everything migrated. Now the last piece of things that we're gonna do is we'll take that last network NIC and move it over. And of course the last thing that we wanna do, we're gonna right mouse click here because we wanna move that last physical NIC we've got. So we're going to add a manage host Okay, we're gonna manage host networking. We're gonna tell it next. Okay, we're gonna manage all of them and we're gonna tell it next again. And now this is gonna to go to uplink one. Okay, so that will be our last one that's there. We're gonna do next and we're gonna do next 
And next again, three adapters, three hosts, and we're gonna do finish. And now that that is completed, we should be able to go back over here into our environment. Let's look, we have all three of our adapters here. Zero, one, USB NIC zero, zero, and one, okay? Off of these, and then we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna see the same thing. NUC two, and those, one, zero, and that physical NUC, and then we'll look at the last one, and we'll take a peek here, and it's gonna be zero, zero, and one. And we're all set. So everything is moved, everything is migrated, and everything is there. And of course, if we click on one of these, it should show us what's being networked through, managing our different machines and things that are there. And now we are on a virtual switch. Excuse me, a distributed switch. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope it made sense. I hope it was real straightforward. And I hope it will help you get your environment migrated from the local switch to a distributed switch. Thanks for watching.